Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome to the Shrouded Isle. This is a uh, it's a puzzle game really with a very striking art style. The whole the whole game has this sort of like monochromatic thing going on and you actually can switch up the colors. They've included a couple of different color schemes. Uh, I like sacramental wine quite a lot, but I thought for showcasing it probably best thing to do is put it out the the way the developers seem to like it. Uh, so two things to get out of the way before we get in here. Number one, uh, full disclosure, this is a review copy of the game provided by the developer. And number two, this game has some pretty dark themes. It doesn't get super gory or anything, but um, there are definitely people who might find this unpleasant to play or watch because of how grim it is. I'm going to try to keep it light through the video, but just, just so everybody's aware. Keeping it light is going to be a little bit of a struggle. 497 years ago, our founders saw that humanity would perish, except the worthy. Our Lord will return in glory to, to reward the faithful, yet there are sinners in our community. As the High Priest, I must select a sinner to sacrifice every season. Three years until Judgment Day. If we are free from sin, he will save us from this suffering. So that's, our, it's, it's, you know, this is a little bit what I was talking about when I said it's going to be uh, tricky to keep it light. So the game is played out over this, like, estate, this, um, not estate, because it's really like a town. You can see all the little buildings and stuff. But the deal is you have to manage the town's five stats. Ignorance, fervor, discipline, penitence, and obedience. It's important to keep these all high because of reasons. I actually don't know what happens if you let them drop too much. The game gives you a pretty harsh warning if they drop below these lines, but as long as you get them back up within the season, the game continues. I have lost the game, but that was not how I lost it. Uh, also, there are five major families, five five major clans in the village. You have the uh, House Kegney, who are responsible for maintaining the ignorance of the village. The advisor from House Kegney oversees burning of books and improving village ignorance. Improving here used to mean something different than what it would normally mean. Uh, we have the Yosefka, uh, who, who are in charge of our fervor, building monuments, improving general village religious fervor. We have House Cadwell, who oversee the confiscation of forbidden goods, improving discipline. Uh, Efferson, House Efferson, whose responsibility is penitence and punishments and whatnot. And finally, the Blackborns whose responsibility is to improve village obedience and law enforcement. So the deal is, this is this is where it gets a little harsh. The deal is, every season, we're going to have to select an advisor from each house. They'll be like our council for the season. At the end of the season, we must sacrifice one of our counselors to appease our lord, to keep the village safe, is the words, uh, the phrase that the game uses. So when you're putting together your council, your it's important that you you pick people who will be capable and competent at maintaining the village stats but you also have to think which one of these people is going to die so as you saw here every every house is made up of six people you have a uh, a matron and a patron and then four younger i'm not sure exactly listen i don't know a lot about family trees and stuff these are obviously children i don't know if this is meant to uh, indicate that this is a spousal relationship or these are cousins or I don't know what the hell's going on but the important thing is each house is made up of six people and a significant number of these people are going to die over the course of the game now everybody has a vice and a virtue Actually, it's virtues at the top vice at the bottom so <laughs> I said that because I said vice and virtue and at the top it says ignorant so you might you might be forgiven for thinking that that's where the vice line is um, but we, we learn about our townspeople over the course of the game, and uh, that's going to weight our decisions. We should probably just get into it here. So we get a certain number of inquiries that we get to make every season, and it seems to be partially, uh, partially governed by your approval. Every house likes or dislikes you uh, to various degrees, and I think you get more inquiries or you more frequently get inquiries at the houses that like you, it seems like. So let's, let's go ahead and, and have an inquiry. What are our stats right now? Obedience could be higher. So... 
This is the house that's responsible for increasing ignorance. So when we select our advisor from this house, they will increase ignorance. They'll also increase whatever stats attached to their virtue, and they'll decrease whatever is attached to their vice. Let's... Hmm. We don't really, we don't really have a choice that I'm super excited about, so let's just pick somebody that we know nothing about so that we learn some stuff. You. Okay. Her virtue, is, or her vice, is related to ignorance in some way. How about over here? Over here, we don't have any, uh, we don't have any inquiries. These people do not like us very much, House Yosefka. So we want to pick somebody that's going to increase obedience, probably. Ivan, okay. So let's inquire about Ivan a little bit. He is unquestioning. He will significantly increase uh, obedience when we use him. That's cool. We're not going to appoint any advisors yet. I want all of the information before we make that choice. Uh, another thing I really like is when they have the virtue that lines up with their house responsibility. We don't really have a lot of that kind of stuff here. This person might be good to bring in because their vice is related to fervor, and our fervor is pretty high. We can afford to lose a little fervor. Okay. So if it seems like this is a little abstract, um, trust. It will get better. It will Things will become clearer. All right, so we have a couple of people who are plus obedience. Let's, I don't know, you. Plus obedience minus ignorance. That's probably fine. So, be making these inquiries is only one way that you find out information about a person's vices and virtues. Using them during the season to increase or decrease the stats of the village will also reveal information about them. So, we'll, uh, we'll have to do that. And finally, before we assign any uh, people to the council, we have a letter. Aaron arrives on behalf of House Efferson, asking for additional funding for repairing their whips. There are many penitent that need punishment. But where should the money come from? Okay, so we're going to have to cut money from House Cadwell or House Kegney, neither of which would uh, be happy. Or we could tell the Effersons to fund their own damn repairs, but our penitence will drop if we do that. Well, let's see, the Cadwells are at minus 20, and the Kegneys are at plus 40. The Kegney predict hunger in coming seasons, blaming Efferson Green. Or Efferson Greed. Aaron Efferson thanks you effusively. So we gain some approval, we gain some penitence. Alright. Little random events pop up. So, like I said, we want to be thinking about who in the town... This is, this is some grim shit, but we're gonna have to... Th who in this town could go? Who could we lose? We also need to increase obedience. We don't need to worry too much about fervor. Let's try to learn some more about somebody whose virtue matches the house responsibility. This person might be valuable. What would you want my advice for? Let's see, that's very clever. I'm trying to suggest that maybe they're not fit for the job so that they don't get picked. Alright, house fervor. Plus obedience might be important here. But... With these people being responsible for fervor, we may not pick this advisor very much because our fervor is already pretty high. That said, they do dislike us, and so we'll want to, uh, we probably want to pick them a little bit just because the house gains approval for you when you use their people to, uh, to do work. Alright. We could grab this guy with his unquestioning nature, he could be valuable. But I'm worried that I'm picking too many people who might be valuable and not enough who, who might be a problem. Let's grab this guy. Right now, this is my speculative sacrifice. He's got a virtue that matches his house responsibility, which means a lot of times when he's picked, very little will happen. He'll raise discipline, but also lower it. And um, that makes him less valuable than others. I'm going to stop apologizing for how gross some of this stuff sounds. The whole game is, like, you know, pretty Malthusian, and that's just that's just the way things are going to be. Here, we don't really need a lot of penitence or discipline. I'm going to appoint this advisor because this is the one we know the most about. And I'm going to, well, 
I'm thinking like maybe we can lock in like really figure out what one of these traits is when when there's a question mark after it it's telling you this is just in this category this trait is in the minus fervor category but it's important to know exactly which traits are which for reasons that will be revealed shortly you're making a mistake he says you better watch your mouth buddy we got a sacrifice coming up uh, and then here we probably want somebody who's plus obedience I'm gonna pick her for the same reason because I'm trying to figure out exactly which traits people have all right we're ready to begin so it is spring and there are three years remaining at the end of the the winter of the last year the game ends I believe it's at the end of the winter so every month during the uh, during the season phase we will select one to three advisors and our village stats will change based on what the advisors job is and what their traits are so let's like let's increase obedience and also we may learn something about anybody who is selected to uh, to act during this month we could use you to raise obedience and fervor and you can see um, if we only have one person selected they do their job super hard if we have multiple people selected they all add less value Danica urged the laborers in carving and, st and sanding and a small shrine to our god was crafted she follows our every suggestion increasing our obedience even more but we don't know exactly how much by because we don't know exactly what her trade is Danica is rumored to be unrepentant. When asked about sins, she simply sh shrugs and changes the subject. Well, we learned something. We learned the category of her vice. Wendelin Efferson dutifully whips the sinful, adhering to the rites of penitence. She was discovered to be lawful. She brings in an, a few extra criminals for questioning. And Wendelin pulls the town on their thoughts about a library, subtracting some amount of influence. Okay, so we figured out exactly what trait she, uh, what positive trait she has. The positive traits are a little bit less important, but once you figure out what the trait is, it has a larger effect. Casimir was discovered to be self-loathing. He is often found weeping and gnashing teeth for no known sin. He's also interrogating townspeople. It seems a few parents conspired to hide rich children from the ritual. I maybe put a little too much significance on that. And then you can see the houses where we, uh, where we chose their person gained some approval and the houses where we did not lost some approval all right well everything is going okay so far we probably want to be careful about leaning into this uh, trying to figure out her negative trait too much because we can't afford to lose too much ignorance well you know what? why don't we run Iva this month and try to get uh, try to get that ignorance up so that we can spend it a little bit more we need to keep figuring out people's negative traits. So let's do this. We'll get some we'll get some obedience from investigating her heresy and from Wendell and Efferson's lawfulness. Yeah, this will leave our stats in a good place. Now, there's a little bit of randomness on the actual outcomes. You can get various amounts of the stat. So Iva has scoured the town and found one old world book to burn in a ritual fire. She leads the village in memorizing scripture passages, and she's we figured out that she, her the category of her vice is unrepentant. All right, uh, brings few extra custom, uh, criminals in for questioning. Ah, she was discovered to be an artist. She's accused of organizing secret poetry readings. Ignorance minus ten. That is a. Uh, be, it's in bold, so you can tell it's a major vice, which means that its effect is extremely powerful. It also means one other thing, uh, which you will see in a moment. So Casimir is interrogating the, found, the townspeople and throwing temper tantrums and stuff, and also we've discovered that he is gentle. He spends some of the month's budget on cushions for the cathedral's pews, so that lowers our fervor a little bit. And at this point, I think you probably have a pretty great grasp of the tone of the entire game. All right, we gotta watch out. We're making these two houses a little bit too unhappy. If they get below this hash mark, things can get a little rough. So this month, why don't we work both of their people? And we'll drive up Penitence. It looks like Penitence is a little bit low. You'll actually reduce Penitence, but 
We won't reduce it by very much. And also, I really do want to try to pin down some of her stuff. So she's burned some books in a ritual fire. We've discovered that she is dull. She performs advisor duties without any problems. Okay, dull, a minor virtue. Ah, poor outcome. Danica and the laborers shaped statues from stone and clay, but a strong wind soon destroyed their efforts. Danica was discovered to be elegant. She makes it seem fashionable to be organized, increasing our obedience. Okay. We're getting really lucky here. We're figuring traits out really fast. Svante found a secret distillery and destroyed it, preventing future distraction. Uh, we don't know what his virtue is, but we discovered him to be an embezzler. When asked about the month's finances, he claims to have lost the receipts. Alright. That's very interesting. We learned a lot of things this month. This was... This was kind of a lucky month. The season's end draws near. A sacrifice must be made to protect the village. Who will be the sacrifice this season? So... We can sacrifice people who have major vices that we have discovered, and the effect on the town will be, the negative effects on the town will be significantly dampened. If we tried to sacrifice Casimir, House Blackborn would become outraged because his transgressions are forgivable, and we would gain a little bit of fervor for sacrificing someone of his vice, because his vice is minus fervor, uh, and... We'll lose a little bit of penitence. The villagers will be horrified by his death, so you can see. If we try to sacrifice somebody who has traits that we're not sure of, House Yosefka will be outraged because I lack proof of Danica's transgressions. And you see, they'll go into rebellion. Uh, the villagers won't find this sacrifice very inspiring because we don't even know what her vices are, so this will slightly raise their penitence. Uh, so, we want to sacrifice somebody, I think... With a major vice, villagers who trust Svante's reputation will feel conflicted and lose ignorance. And the villagers will be inspired, inspired to greater discipline through the purging of this sinner. And House Cadwell will have to grudgingly submit to my decision because we all know, we all know that guy is a embezzler. So. so we would lose obedience if we sacrificed Wendelin. We could afford to lose obedience a little bit more, and our ignorance is still a little bit low, and this would raise it. Our ignorance would actually end up the highest of our stats after that. I think we're going to do... <laughs> I think we're going to sacrifice this young woman for the crime of art. Yep, that's... I mean, that's the game. Okay. We sacrificed the life of Wendelin in the name of Chernobog and the good of our people. Our condolences to House Efferson. House Efferson solemnly mourns. Uh, we lose 30 approval with them, but we gained 5 approval with the other houses, because everybody's relieved we didn't choose them. And the villagers praise Chernobog for ridding their community of a blighted soul. Again, guilty of the crime of art. Ignorance plus 15, obedience minus 10. The night before the new season, a whisper caresses your dreams. My faithful servant, I await your devotion. Encourage obedience, unfaltering spirit of law and order. The thieving one, give her to me. Someone is a thief. Criminals and rebels talk openly of rebellion. I must enforce obedience by the end of this season. So, uh, when we have a dream like that, the threshold, the safety threshold for one of the uh, stats moves way up. We're going to have to get whole bunch of obedience. We've got a letter. We'll deal with that in a second. First, let us deal with our inquiries. So the Kegneys will allow us to make one inquiry. We're going to have to bring up obedience. Uh, because we gain so much ignorance at the end, this can kind of be our dump stat. We can, we can afford to run some people who have minus ignorance. And the thieving one. And it's a woman. He said, give her to me. So a thief... Penitence, right? Is this, this is a failure of penitence? Thieving? So someone who's unrepentant, unrepentant and female, probably. Let's... If we inquire about Iva, we will, fi we will discover what her negative trait is. Because she only had one thing left. 
Uh, if we had inquired about Susan, we might have figured out what her negative trait was, but we also might have learned the category of her positive trait. Where else do we have inquiries waiting? Uh, not in Yosefka, they're not interested in talking to us. Cadwell. We're looking for a woman who could be a thief. Well, thieving is probably not a lack of fervor, and it looks like everyone else in this house is male, so the thieving one is not here. Who do we want to reveal something about? We're probably going to take Svante into our uh, into our council, and he will be our nominal. He'll be our sacrifice unless we discover the thief. So I suppose at this point, let's just learn something about somebody that we don't know anything about. He is disobedient. Okay. I was just here. We'll ask House Blackborn what's up. Uh, there's a woman whose traits we do not know at all. There are two women whose traits we do not know at all. Let's... you. She is full of fervor. That does not give me very useful information. And the Effersons... Sometimes I hear the sea call to me, she says. Hmm. Curious. Hmm, this woman is unrepentant. Okay, we didn't figure out what her vice is, but we did figure out what the category of her virtue and let's deal with this. Dimas Yosefka arrives, concerned. He confesses deep love for two people, and must choose one to marry before Chernobog awakens. One makes him happy, while the other inspires him to be a better person. You tell him happiness is fleeting, but virtue is etern eternal to encourage discipline. We could tell him to ask the, held the elders of the house, because I don't give a shit about this. Hey guy, I'm real busy. What are you thinking? Yosefka's pretty mad at us. This might not be a bad idea. Or, if it is not clear to your heart, perhaps neither is right. Boy, that's... I'm very curious. Let's click this one. Demas takes your advice to follow his heart and rushes away to propose. He has become impulsive. Yosefka was a flirt, or Demas, Yosefka was a flirt. He is now impulsive. And what we just did here is we learned two pieces of information. The category of the vice and the uh, specific vice within the category. So that turned out really well, I think. I think that was the best of the outcomes for us. We'll deal with Yosefka in time. Alright, let's assign some people. So, we know that... No, not here. We know that we're appointing Svante Caldwell, or Cadwell, as a... As a hedge. What else do we want? We probably want to take unrepentant women to try to ferret out which one of them is the thief. I think unrepentant is right. So let's grab you. We're, gonna, we're also going to have to be a little careful about our penitence. If we're intentionally using people who are unrepentant a lot, we're going to gonna run a serious risk of losing all of our penitence. Hmm... She's plus penitence, so she can't also be minus. But maybe we take her just so that we can gain some more penitence while doing other things. Although our fervor is pretty high. I don't know that we really have a reason to do that. Yeah. Okay. We can use her. I rarely get complaints about Danica. We can use her. She'll gain us some obedience and we'll have a chance to find out what her negative trait is. Here in House Blackburn, this is a person we're probably going to be using a couple of times because we need obedience, so... Do we have someone who is plus obedience? We don't. But we do have two women whose negative trait categories could be right. So let's pick one. I'm going to pick Rada Blackburn because I don't. we don't really need extra fervor right now. And I'd like to try to find some things out about her. Soon our suffering shall end. Is that a good way to greet people at the door? Alright, um... I want to bring you in, I think, so that we can try to find the, uh, the negative trait. I also kind of want to bring in somebody who can increase obedience. Picking her is not going to have much effect, except that it will, uh increase our ignorance, because she'll gain penitence but also lose it. This could be Chessa Efferson as well. She once disagreed with me in public. The nerve! 
You know what? Let's grab her. No, we should we should go with the people who are more likely to be the one we're looking for. This might be a tough season. All right, we definitely have to investigate heresy. We also should try to figure out what's going on. You'll help us with our obedience. Okay, I'm going to do this. It won't We don't have to get our obedience up until the end of the season. All right, we've made a, a small shrine to our god successfully. We've discovered that she's a weasel. Danica somehow doesn't find time to go to confession. There should be some quotation marks around that. All right, well, we're going to stop picking her for stuff. And she's House Yosefka. Ah. Uh, okay, well, they're going to be pretty unhappy by the end of the season. We've discovered that Kazmira is a narcissist. A Kazmira fan club springs up, though you suspect Kazmira herself started it. Well, that's inconvenient. She did have a great outcome on her job, though. She whipped the sinful with purifying joy until their tears and blood soaked the earth. And we're happy about that. That's a thing we're happy about. Rana interrogated the townspeople, and we did not figure out her vice or her virtue. Okay, so House Yosefka is going to lose 10 approval, because we're not going to pick them anymore this, uh, this time. And Cadwell's going to be a problem as well. Cadwell's going to lose another 10 approval because we're not going to pick them for the rest of the season, probably. And we're going to kill one of their people. So we're probably going to have to butter them up a little bit afterward. All right, well, let's pick you because I need to know your trait. And you because I do need to get my obedience up. So we get a little bit more value out of everybody's traits when they are... Uh, when we don't pick everybody. Oh, I wasn't thinking about the fact that we were going to crash our penitence. Well, it's okay. If you end the season with a stat in the red, it will just mark that as a stat that you need to get up next season. It's if you end it while the stat is blinking and in the red, like obedience, that uh, the bad thing happens. I assume the game ends, but maybe something, maybe something a little less drastic. So Susan's rumored to be ignorant. That's not so bad. She's rumored to be disciplined. She works extra hard, skipping meals and evening leisures. Okay. So now we have to get our obedience way up. Way up. I think just running Rada should do it, right? No, actually, I killed us. Well, you know... Yeah, I really underestimated how much <laughs> obedience we were going to need. Well, let's see what happens. I'm curious. It'll be good to know. Okay, she had an average outcome. I was kind of hoping she would, like, really nail it. She's rumored to be disobedient. Well, that... That didn't help very much. At least Inquisitor Blackburn likes us. The season's end draws near. So... Sacrificing her will increase obedience because she is disobedient. But it won't increase it by much because we don't know exactly what her trait is. And of course, House Blackburn will be outraged. I'm going to sacrifice the embezzler. This, is, this was the plan. And it's not, it doesn't matter. There's nothing we can do to get obedience high enough to not have whatever the penalty is. Yeah, all right. I'm very curious what will happen. But first, this will happen. And as you can see, the uh, intensity of that seems to be increasing over time. We sacrifice the life of Svante in the name of Chernobog. Our condolences to Cadwell. The village has reportedly failed to demonstrate obedience. The end is nigh. The village rejects obedience. Your sermons are unattended, and the families dissolve into bickering until all agree you should be exiled. Well, that's a bummer, man. I swear to God, uh, I did a lot better before I started recording. Anyway, that's, uh, that's the Shrouded Isle. 
I don't want to, I would have probably stopped there uh, after that season anyway. I don't want to show off too much of the game, spoil too much of, uh, of the happenings. But I think this is pretty cool. It is a, uh, it is currently available on Steam. And I didn't look up the price beforehand because I'm one of those professionals that you hear about. Uh, I believe it is not very expensive. It is currently $9 on sale. Post-release sale, usually $10. So yeah, I hope this has been informative, useful to you. Uh, if it has, of course, I'd appreciate, you know, if you uh, always appreciate likes and comments, all that good YouTube stuff. And thank you everyone for your support. Watching the video, uh, likes, subscriptions, anything that you do uh, is tremendously meaningful to me. And come back next time for more new stuff. And we'll see you then.